Hey guys, Robert McClellan here. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about a well-known issue that has been prevailing over the last few months. I've seen a lot of posts of people that are posting, they're getting audio dropouts or MIDI notes that's not necessarily coming through correctly. A lot of this has to do with just simply your performance of your computer. Now, there are ways that you can minimize this and actually help, and today we're gonna to talk about some of those ways that are specific to Cakewalk by BandLab. So it's imperative to mention right out of the gate that if you don't have a computer that's up to speed and meets the requirements of Cakewalk by BandLab, then you're already off to sort of a bad start. Now, if on the other hand, you do have a computer that meets those requirements and you're still having those issues, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, I would also preface most of this by saying that most computers are up to speed these days. In fact, most off-the-shelf computers come with enough RAM and enough processing power to run Cakewalk by BandLab with no problem whatsoever. When you get into higher track counts, however, you're always going to run into sort of these hurdles. Likewise, with higher track counts also comes more plug-in instances. So today, what we're going to talk about are ways that you can navigate through and sort of minimize the CPU load whenever you have multiple tracks, multiple plug-in instances. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is plug-in load balancing. This option can be found under Edit, Preferences, Audio, Playback and Recording, and it is here. Now, the purpose of plug-in load balancing is to prevent audio dropouts caused by high-effect processing loads. When using multi-core CPU processors, Cakewalk by BandLab allows you to increase the number of plugins that you can use in a project by distributing the processing across multiple cores. Now, the biggest benefit will be seen on systems with four or more physical cores. A project's biggest processing load is normally attributed to plug-in processing, which can lead to CPU spikes, inefficient load balancing among the cores on a multiple core PC, and, as previously stated, audio dropouts. This is where Cakewalk's plug-in load balancing actually exploits the full power of multi-core CPUs to balance DSP workloads across multiple cores when possible. This can lead to better CPU loading and fewer spikes in the audio engine. So from this tick box here, we can either enable or disable plug-in load balancing. Now, it's important to note that this option is only available if Use Multiprocessing Engine is enabled as well. When enabled, Cakewalk will attempt to load balance effects racks that contain two or more unbypassed plugin effects, including track effects racks, bus effects racks, and clip effects racks, clip FX chains, or even FX chains, pro channel FX racks, and pro channel FX chains. The other thing to remember is that by enabling plugin load balancing, it does not introduce any latency whatsoever. Now let's talk about when you would actually use plug-in load balancing. Well, to determine if a project will benefit from plug-in load balancing, you first need to check the control bar's performance module to see if any cores are spiking. The performance module lets you monitor the activity of each CPU core. You can see it here. Now, as you can see, each one of my CPU cores is very low at this particular time. However, if any one of these bars ever reached to the top and clipped in the red, then that would let me know that plug-in load balancing might actually be a good option for me. Now, the control bar's performance module can actually display several different CPU meter modes. To display a meter for each core, simply right-click the performance module, point to CPU meter display options, and then select audio processing. You should enable plug-in load balancing if the project experiences excessive core spiking or one core is significantly higher than the others. Now, if the CPU load is even to begin with, there likely won't be any benefit from enabling the plug-in load balancing. Another instance where you might want to enable this is if the project uses a high audio latency setting. And furthermore, another scenario that you might use this is if one track is performing most of the audio effects processing. So now let's talk about when not to use plug-in load balancing. Load balancing itself incurs some overhead since internally it subdivides and processes the plugins at smaller buffer sizes. If the loads are not unbalanced to start with, this overhead can actually exceed the benefit. Therefore, there will likely be no benefit from enabling plug-in load balancing. Say, for instance, if the CPU load is even to start with, there is no excessive spiking of the cores, or one core is not significantly higher than the others, or maybe if the project uses many lightweight plugins with smaller loads. Now, if all tracks are about the same number of effects or have a similar load, you're also not going to benefit as much from plug-in load balancing. Likewise, if the project uses a low mixing latency buffer setting, you're also not going to benefit as much from plug-in load balancing. 
It's also imperative to know that plugin load balancing does not apply to synths in the synth rack. These are not processed serially and do not benefit from this technology. Also, FX racks that have plugins with active sidechains are also not affected, and external inserts are not affected as well. Now let's talk a little bit about how plugin load balancing actually works. It's important to understand the impact load balancing has on a CPU load. Load balancing reduces processing time, but potentially at the cost of increased CPU use. When enabled, Cakewalk attempts to share the processing load of all plugins in FX racks by distributing the load among the available cores. For a little bit of a visual representation of this, let's consider the following FX racks chain with four plugins of different processing loads and FX2 being the most expensive. Now in this example, FX2 becomes the bottleneck in the processing since the downstream plugins have to wait for its processing to finish. When plugin load balancing is enabled, Cakewalk then optimizes this chain by subdividing the workload in parallel to distribute the load across multiple cores when possible. If you've used plugin load balancing and you're still experiencing some audio dropouts, there's always another feature that allows you to sort of take the load off of your CPU, and that is the freeze feature found here. The freeze feature allows you to temporarily bounce your track, including soft sense and effects to reduce the amount of CPU power needed. The freeze feature also works for synths patched in the synth rack. By right clicking on this small snowflake icon, you can see that I have many different options here. Freeze track bounces the audio in the track to a new audio clip or clips and applies any effects and disables the effects bin. The unfreeze track discards the bounced audio restores the original audio to the way it was before or to the last freeze or quick freeze command and enables or re-enables the effects bin. Quick unfreeze track hides and mutes the bounced audio, restores the original audio to the way it was before the last freeze or quick freeze command and enables the effects bin. Bounced audio is retained, however, and toggling between quick freeze and quick unfreeze should be instantaneous. By clicking on the freeze options, you can also see a small dialog box that opens here and allows you to see the different options that you have whenever you do freeze a track. Now, it is important to note that an unfreeze or quick unfreeze command restores the audio on a track to the way it was before the last freeze or quick freeze command. So any editing that you've done to a frozen track is discarded when you unfreeze or quick unfreeze that track. It's also important to note that you control the bit depth of all rendering operations, bouncing, freezing, applying effects, and that can be done here in the Edit, Preferences, File, and Audio Data folder. As you can see here in the Render Bit Depth field, I have my value set to 24 bits. Now, if you would like to get a bird's eye view of what all tracks have been frozen in the project that you're working on, you can also go to Tracks, Track Manager, and under the toggle menu option, select frozen. That shows me that the lead vocals have been frozen in this particular project. Now, aside from freezing and unfreezing tracks or using plugin load balancing, there's also some other aesthetic approaches that you can use to actually save yourself a lot of CPU usage. If you find yourself grabbing for the same reverb plugins, the same distortion and delay plugins time and time again, and you're gonna use them already on multiple tracks, then just simply create a bus. As you can see here, I've created a reverb bus. Now this has the one plugin instance of the reverb that I'm gonna use in a multiplicity of these tracks on this one project. So now, instead of having this one reverb plugin slapped on 18 different tracks, I can simply have one instance of the plugin here on the bus and then send the tracks to that plugin. Therefore, reducing my CPU load and the processing needed to bring this project to completion. Well guys, I hope that these tips will help you to get less audio dropouts as well as just better system performance in general. If you found these tips useful, share them with a friend of yours, give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more great content just like this. I do go live once a week where I take live Q&A and display a lot of the tips and tricks for using Cakewalk by BandLab right before the very eyes of the audience, and you can ask questions on the fly there. Remember, this channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. We can dream alone, 
We can even create alone, but together we can achieve so much more.